Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Don S and Charlie M. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. I did listen to the GM earnings call. I did it for you guys, and there was one main takeaway. So at one point they said, we see a path to doubling revenue by 2030. So I put this quick chart together showing what Tesla's revenue could look like in 2030 with 50% per year revenue growth rates. So to boil things down, that would put Tesla around $2 trillion in revenue, which yes, I know sounds crazy. However, I do really think Tesla can grow at 50% year over year for a decade given its total addressable market and the history of execution, as I said in the tweet earlier. That would mean Tesla has roughly 10 times the revenue as GM in 2030, and we already know what the margin situation looks like for Tesla. It's much better and will only continue to get better. So make of it what you will, but investing in one of these two companies, it seems like a no brainer obvious choice. Now for the rest of the call, you can go ahead and pause and read this if you would like to. The only other thing that I really wanted to point out was about Cruise. They mentioned they have five out of six permits that they need for fared ride share services. So they're waiting on that last permit that they did apply for in November as they are starting those passenger based rides in San Francisco in a driverless fashion. Interesting tweet from Martin, the head of Tesla's investor relations. It seems that valuation based on current vehicle sales is an outdated metric. What if the value of the company consists of the size of the current EV business, plus future potential value of the EV business, plus the future value of FSD, energy, etc., minus the cost of disassembling the ICE business. Now, I personally don't know anybody that's still valuing companies just based on current vehicle sales. However, I think this is a good and simple framework to think about the auto industry moving forward. And obviously one major cost that Tesla does not have is this final one that all of legacy does. However, what I wanted to mention here is I think we all need to be aware of the situation. Some of these legacy automakers I think of maybe Toyota, are probably thinking in the back of their minds, we're just gonna milk our ice business, get all the profit out of it that we can, and then in the future, maybe we'll just go bankrupt and hope, cross the fingers, that our government will bail us out, and then we can use that money to actually invest in electrification. The problem with that is the people that get hurt the most are the employees who might be out of a pension, they might be out of a job, and all of the things that go with that. However, it seems like a somewhat reasonable outcome if you look into the future. Brandon K put this chart together that I wanted to share because a lot of people People always ask they would like to see Tesla's numbers compared to the competition. So for automotive gross margin, one of the most important metrics, Tesla in the pink coming in at 31%, as you can see, Q4 2021, relative to the rest of the industry. And this chart doesn't really need any explanation. This video was making its rounds at Giga Berlin, dipping the car in a cleaning bath to electrically apply a coating to prevent corrosion when on the road. Now, yes, this is somewhat common, but it's fun to watch nonetheless. The Secretary of Commerce actually had some encouraging words about a potential relationship or at least a discussion with Tesla and Elon. That was viewed as a snub, Madam Secretary, by Elon Musk, who subsequently tweeted about it. Um, particularly, you know, in, in the discussion of EVs, Tesla makes EVs here in the United States. They are one of the most technologically forward companies in the United States. Um, should Elon Musk be by his phone expecting your phone call then? It sounds like it sounds like the the line of communication is now open between the Biden administration and and Tesla, at least from your side. Yeah, absolutely. Look, none of this is personal. These issues are way too important um, for anyone to have, you know, feelings hurt. Like, let's just do the work. And as I said, anyone who has good ideas or is willing to help us. Absolutely, we want the help. On Twitter, Gail shared Tesla's video where they have 81 megapacks in Texas providing 200 megawatt hours of energy to help support the grid this very crucial after what happened last February. I wanted to share though because Elon said Tesla is working hard to provide more megapacks for grid stabilization. So Tesla is already having a pretty outsized impact on Texas and it's not been there that long. From Tesla Adri, there will be free holiday supercharging in Germany, France, Sweden, and Norway during off-peak hours over the winter holidays. In case you're in any of these areas, I'll include the link below so you can find out specifics. From Troy Tesla, based on what I've heard, the Model Y production line at Giga Berlin and Texas is expected to produce Model 3 2 with 4680 cells and a structural battery pack once the Model Y reaches a 400,000 per year run rate. Uh, and it's also where we'll be doing 
uh, we'll be doing Cybertruck there, the Tesla Semi, and we'll be doing Model 3 and Y for the uh, eastern half of North America. Here we have some more wall art at Giger Berlin. I just think these are really cool looking and very well done. The spice must flow. Ford reported earnings last night and they are down so far about 10% on the day after a miss. This was a great tweet from James. 2021 gap net income per delivery. $1,600 for GM, including joint ventures, $2,500 for Ford, excluding the gain from the Rivian investment, and Tesla sitting at almost $6,000, so a pretty big deal. So I haven't had a chance to dive into Ford's earnings just yet. I have some family in town that I rarely get to see, but hopefully this weekend I'll have a chance to do so. And we get some final curtain type of comments from BMW CEO Oliver Zipsa. Speaking of moving to EVs, he said, that's why we also warn against doing this too early and not giving the transformation a chance to develop with the markets. It would be harmful to simply give up a technology in which you have a global market position without need. I don't think that would help the climate or anyone else. What was he talking about? The largest market segment in absolute terms by a wide margin in Germany, but also in Europe and worldwide is the internal combustion engine. Before you simply shut something like that down within eight or 10 years, you have to know well what you're doing. So clearly BMW is not that eager to have an EV future and still seemingly very uneducated when it comes to vehicle emissions. And it's Friday, so let's have a quick look at Tesla stock for the week, currently up about 4% on the day at the time of recording. So as of now, Tesla is up 6.1% on the week, up about $53 per share. Zooming out a bit, Tesla did indeed have a nice bounce off the 200 day moving average. I also tweeted about this, when you zoom out even further, you can see that over the last two years, the 200 day moving average has been the best buying opportunities for Tesla. So really dumbing things down here, over time, Tesla stock price really just compresses toward the 200 day and then ultimately releases from. So looking at the extensions from the 200 day moving average to get a framework of where Tesla could go, back in January of 2021, it was extended about 130%, we'll say, from the 200 day. And more recently, it was extended about 73%. So if you stick with the lower of those two and you extend about 70% from the current 200 day moving average, that would take us to a stock price of about 1400 now, obviously, over the next six months, the 200-day moving average will move. However, it's just something to keep in the back of your mind. But simply put, not financial advice, anytime Tesla stock is trading around the 200-day moving average within a few percent, for me, that is always an immediate buy if I have the capital. However, I want to be clear. As the macro uncertainty continues and interest rates begin to rise and inflation still has an uncertain future, there is a chance Tesla dips well below the 200 day moving average. I'm not predicting that or saying that will happen. I'm just telling you to be prepared for it. Having cash on the sidelines is never a bad thing in the event that something like that does happen over the next six months. But that's gonna wrap it up for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful and safe weekend and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Supporters.